that. Okay, so I went to film school. I'm from Toronto, so I went to the York University Film School in Toronto. And in my last year, I made a student film, um, which, no, I'm not going to show you. And it won the award for uh, best student film of the country, which was nice. Not that there were that many film students, so it wasn't a stiff competition. But that allowed me to win what they call the, the uh, Director's Apprenticeship Award, which meant that I was put um, shadowing a director in the industry straight out of film school. And it was a revelation, actually, because in film school, I only knew that there was like DP, director, editor, sound, and producer, and that's all I really knew about. And then when I arrived on set, they handed me this call sheet with 350 names on the back, and I didn't really know what the heck a rigging gaffer did, but that was the best thing about being like dropped in the industry, was to see how a film crew is a huge machine, right? Like everybody has their specialty and the machine comes together and, and no matter where you drop that machine, like you drop that machine in Iceland or you drop it in the Sahara Desert or you drop it in the middle of New York City, the machine still works. So it was kind of amazing to witness. When I came out of film school and I had a BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, no one has ever asked me for my degree. In the industry, especially to be a director or to be a, a, uh, an editor or DP or whatever, they're going to say, oh yeah, you're a DP, show me what you've shot. You know, you're a director, show me what you've directed. So the lucky thing about the digital era right now is you can actually make something. So my advice is you make something and you, you know, and it's very possible to do. I would say on what you choose to make, my advice would be, don't shoot yourself in the foot. Like, don't say, I'm gonna make Transformers because you've got two guys in the backyard with your mom as an extra. Like, don't make up something that you can't possibly do a good job at. So what you put on paper, what your script is, should be something that you feel very competently equipped to make with the means at your disposal, right? So. And it doesn't mean you have to make a boring thing, not at all, but um, you know, just don't, don't be so stupid ambitious that you've shot yourself in the foot. And then your reel looks like a lame version of Transformers as opposed to a really great version of 500 Days of Summer or whatever, whatever it is, you know. Well, I mean, it's the director's communication skills and charm skills are probably the number one skill set of a director, like more than anything. And that's the invisible, that's the invisible skill. Like they don't, teach that, right? But, um, but everybody has different needs, right? And if you're specifically talking about actors to director, there are very, very different ways of working. And particularly with actors whose craft comes from some interior place, right? I don't know where it comes from. It's, it's from a place that is different for every actor. So, so I think that, you know, um, one of the skills of the director First of all, my number one skill is to try and have thought through that particular actor's role and character as much as you can so that you're not caught with your pants down, right? So when the actor says, why am I doing this? Or what, mm, what, what's the, why am, you know, you're not going, uh, I don't know. Because A, you're going to immediately lose respect of that actor. B, it's a really stupid way to be directing a movie anyways. And C, you really, like, you might not have exactly the same take on it as that person, but at least you've got something to offer. And you will be respected for having thought it through. And then comes the emotional meltdown <laughs> scenarios when nothing is going right or the time is running out and all, you know, like, and somebody needs something and the director's got to be there to, like, calm it down, keep it focused, whatever it takes, you know, or gear it up. Be the cheerleader, enthusiasm, this is how we get through the day. Don't give up, that was crap, but it's not gonna be crap this time, like whatever it takes. But so the point is the director's charm has to feed what's necessary in that moment. I learned early on not to put all my eggs in one basket, meaning like I had my project, my baby, right? And I thought if I just concentrate on this one thing that I love and I focus, it too will happen faster. But the industry is so scattered with people juggling plates and looking for the easier ones to make or whatever that you can't actually guarantee that just because you focus on one thing, that will be the next thing that goes. You really can't. So, I, I mean, I did that for too long in the first days of my career and found out the hard way, like, no one else is focusing. <laughs> so you better get more irons in the fire. So, um, 
So don't, you know, not all your eggs in one basket. If you're a screenwriter or you're a filmmaker, you, pr you know, you try different things, right? And keep the ideas flowing. Because there's actually, you talked about attitude, there's actually like a great creativity in sitting down and writing something or meeting with people and talking about the possibilities of it. And that keeps you going, the possibilities of what it can be. And then occasionally something comes to fruition and the high of that keeps you going to the next one. But you've got to fight the dark days, man, you know.